Welcome. This is Shakti Karola Neverin, your online astrologer. And uh, I'm doing today's full moon video for you, where we look into the upcoming full moon, April 10th, at 22 degrees uh, in Libra, 11.08 p.m. So uh, the whole point with doing moon astrology, full moon, new moon, watching the moon going through the different signs, making all these new connections with other planets, the whole point is that you become more attuned with your inner emotional set point, how you filter the world emotionally. And some of that is not very personal. We are all kind of exposed to this global fields of energy, of frequency. And uh, when we follow the moon around, we are more in tune with our own inner world of emotions. But we also become aware of what's really my own stuff or what might be triggered because I'm living in a field where a lot of certain energies and themes are out there. So right now we're all kind of exposed to a lot of anxiety and a lot of threatening things happening in the world. And we're so aware of all that stuff going on because of the internet and, and the news and, and all the newsletter we get and Facebook and all that stuff. So, so following the moon astrology gives you kind of a little more space to that emotional roller coaster we are on. So the full moon, first of all, is kind of really an, an enhancement of our emotional feeling of, of filtering the world. So in whatever sign the full moon is, that's kind of the filter, that's kind of emphasized. And depending where that sign is in your birth chart, this is where you will have a bigger tendency to, to react more um, spontaneously, where you will be more reactive, where something triggers you maybe just under the threshold of your, of your consciousness. And then suddenly, I have something here, sorry. <laughs> and suddenly you, you, something spots up and, and you react in a, in a certain way. And usually it's not how we would like to react if we have a moment of thinking about it. So, so the whole point for me with astrology is that we become more self-reflective that we cultivate the inner witness, that we have a little more spaciousness, so we're not as driven from outer forces pushing us at us or our own unconscious structures coming up. So, so let's have some fun. Full moon in Libra. It's a, a, a wonderful sign to contemplate. So first of all, the full moon is always, uh, the moon is opposing the sun, astrologically speaking. So it's 108 degrees away. So it reflects fully the, the light, the energy of the sun. So that's why it's usually a very emotional time. People drink more, they're out in the pubs, there is more tendency for violence. So cats are out there hauling all night. People don't sleep as well. So everything is kind of a little higher in that emotional field of potential reactivity. So uh, when this is happening in a sign, that's kind of the filter we're having towards what's happening. So this month coming up, we will have the, uh, the Libra full moon. And Libra, as you might know, is ruled by the goddess Venus. So it's all about love, harmony, connection. So uh, that's why I said it's actually a really nice full moon to have. So it really brings our awareness into our heart, our need and willingness to connect from the heart with more kindness, more, more love. So we could say love is in the air and um, it will come out in, in different ways. So Libra we call the archetype of the artist or the lover. So well, Venus, the goddess of love, harmony and beauty, you can see the connection here. So, so when we have a, a lot of Libra or strong Libra going on in our chart, which means we might have the sun, the ascendant or the moon there, then we usually have an artistic uh, uh, bent 
We love beautiful things. We love to be fashionable and beautiful clothes and have nice soft materials. So it's a world of fashion and beauty and art. So, so that's the artistic side of Libra. The other side is the side of the lover. So we could say in Libra it's all about relationships. It's all about how are we able to connect with the other. So Libra is the relationship sign where it's all about committed relationship. So here we look at, uh, at the, 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 the husband, the lover, uh, the partner, the, the best friend. Uh, so those kind of deep relationships, hard connections. And when we come in from the evolutionary perspective with uh, Sun, Moon, Ascendant or other planets in Libra, then the evolutionary intent for us is to learn something about that field of experience. So if you are a Libra, you might be aware that not only are relationships very attractive and important for you, but you're learning about it. You're learning what it means to be in a successful, eye level uh, committed relationship, which is based on the high end in respect and friendship. So uh, an Indian mystic Osho once said, the highest level of of a love relationship is friendship. Uh, so if you have that, you can always fall back onto something what's really carrying your relationship through hard times. Uh, so there's only sexual attraction and you like how the other person looks and, and kind of acts in the world, might not be enough for a long-term successful relationship. Mm -hmm. Eye to eye is kind of included in a true friendship. So there have been many books written about codependent relationships. So one person is here, the other person is here, and then you do that dance and it has a lot to do with power and, and dependency and, and all that stuff. So, so friendship for me is really that, whoop, yeah, eye to eye. <laughs> It's mirroring, so I have to see how I, how I do it. So it's this eye-to-eye -eye connection where we both are basically on the same level of maturity. And that's really what High and Libra is about, to find that loved one, that lover, that connection, to, to be able to experience that. So Libra has very specific skills to offer or uh, areas and themes to learn about. And with the full moon, we all are invited to, to participate in that. So, so that's kind of highlighted uh, around the full moon. I would give it at least a week around it. That's really kind of in, in the field of our consciousness. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. Good to see you. So, so Libra wants to contribute beauty in the field of fashion, in the field of art, through painting, through creating a beautiful garden, whatever form it takes. It's really that urge to, to make the world a little bit more beautiful place. Then Libra, if you're a Libra, you're striving for harmony, for some kind of balance. You know how the scales in, in the pictures you see about Libra, they always seem to be in, in balance in, in, in the pictures, but actually that's the end goal. So usually we're kind of this way or we're kind of that way. So, so Libra is really that balancing journey to find out how to do that. And speaking about the chakras, where that balancing is happening in us, it's in the heart. So the heart chakra is kind of the middle chakra between the three uppers and the three lower chakras. So everything is happening in the heart. That's why I really like to talk about this full moon, because I think it's a wonderful chance to really get a little closer in implementing and learning about that. Libras also have a knack to always see opposing points of view. 
uh, that something beautiful, but it can also be very annoying for the day-to-day -day experience of Libra because it makes it often hard to really decide, do I go this way or do I go that way? Because you say you can see something good in, in, in both paths. <laughs> so, so harmony and peace, that's something Libran people learn about. Uh, and, and the opposing points of views are, are the same because you have that knack to, to, to find that balance and that peaceful center where, where actually opposing forces complement each other. So that's why Libran actually make really great uh, mediators, peacemakers. I have seen it uh, uh, with clients, people growing up in families who have a strong uh, Libra nature. They're kind of the peacemakers in, in the families. That's their role and it's so easily to, to take on for them. Mm -hmm. so, so I also already told, talked a little bit about that eye-to-eye -eye intention to, to learn that respectful, loving, friendship-based relationship for Libra. So uh, we can take that and really see how do we do with that in our personal life. Uh, do you have the feeling that, that you're higher or lower in your level of maturity in your relationship? And that's kind of a dicey question because we have a lot of projections there and it's a good question to ask how truly are we able to see our loved one objectively. Usually even there we have projections, we have a certain filter, uh, certain things we want to see. So it's a good question to ask around this full moon. How fully are you really receiving the other, feeling the other consciously and allowing the other person to really fully appear in, in who they truly are. A good example for that is when, when you're fully grown, you're on a spiritual journey, you're, you're kind of evolved, and then you go visit your family. <laughs> That's the best uh, place to really see how far you come and can you, can you place that, can you keep that place, that, that hold that place of consciousness, or are you falling back into old ways of, of being with your family? So, uh, because family often has a very set way of uh, perceiving you and uh, uh, it's often not easy for parents to really see their children as grown up and evolved. And uh, the job of the children is always to evolve further than from the family structure uh, and, and level of consciousness they have come from. So that's, that's your job. You have to, to, to evolve and, and go further. So, so that's kind of the, the range here I wanted to, to talk about in general. Uh, because Libra is so concerned about the relationship and beauty, I wanted to highlight one aspect of it a little deeper. So as a woman in this society or in, in other first country, first world societies, we are utterly deeply conditioned that in order to be successful and loved and received well in the world, we have to present a certain image. We have to present a certain uh, 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 packaging, we have to be beauty, we have to have the right amount of weight and so many people are struggling to, to, to perform according to, to that image. And yes, we know, don't uh, judge the book by the cover, but often uh, we personally are so identified with how we look, how we show up, how beautiful we are, uh, our haircut. I mean, we spend so much money on clothes and haircuts and coloring and nails and, and all that stuff in order to be more beautiful, in order to be more attractive. So I just want to bring up that point. I mean, I don't accept myself from that. I, I went through that conditioning as well, even with me turning 60 next month. Uh, the beauty obviously isn't what it used to be. So I, I feel like very consciously I'm forced to really connect with, with deeper qualities, with deeper qualities of beauty and, and what that means. 
Uh -huh. So I think that's all the theme field of, of this full moon and, and Libra. And I imagine you will really enjoy this video if you have any emphasis in, in your birth chart in Libra. If you don't have your birth chart yet, you can get to my website, sign up for your newsletter, and then you get your, your birth chart being worked through to give in your birth information. And you guys get your love stone report, which also relates very well back to, to the, the Libra and the Inusian qualities I'm discussing today, because uh, the, the birth stone for Venus uh, is, is based on that position in the sign in the house and how it's aspected in your chart. So you might know that I'm this, this expert for, for gemstones and I've written a book about jewelry and gems for self-discovery. So, so if, if you want to use gemstones in order to keep a certain intention and focus point, use gemstones as an anchor or you use gemstones as bringing certain frequencies and energies into your field and balancing consciously aspects in your chart. And you can do that. So I did the whole gemstone profile report for you and I'm gonna put the, the link down there if you're interested, it's just 20 bucks. And then you really know which gemstone is doing what according to which planet you have in your chart. So the, the, the love stone report is free, give you a little taste. So make sure you, you sign up, get your chart and, and, and your love stone report. It's a good start. Okay, so uh, I want to give you as usual at the end of my forecast, uh, one of the gemstones you can work with according to the, the subject and the energy I'm, I'm subscribing, describing. Damn, the English is hard. <laughs> you know I'm originally from Germany, right? So anyway, uh, today I want to talk about the watermelon tourmaline. So this is a really nice end piece from a big crystal. So this is a cut off that, that crystal. So, so in general, you can say all pink stones relate to the heart and help us with self-love, with, with becoming more conscious and connected with the heart. The watermelon tourmaline adds another quality to it. So it has a pink in the middle oop, and the green line around it. So that's why we call it watermelon because the watermelon is kind of looking like that. So the watermelon is adding another quality to the, the heart supporting self-love enhancing qualities. So let me read a very short thing I wrote here about uh, watermelon tourmaline. So first of all, each stone has what we call a signature. So it's related to certain uh, planetary qualities. So the watermelon is uh, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. So it's green on the outside and pink on the in inside, just as the name implies. It is like rubellite. So the, the center we would call rubellite. Uh, with the added aspects of patience and compassion, combining the qualities of love, self-love, patience and compassion. We are ready to master the affairs of the heart. So I thought that kind of these two sentences really bring it to the point. So this is basically what, what this full moon is about. And meditating with the watermelon melon tourmaline, or if you just have a rubellite, you just work with what you have. So when you meditate with a gemstone, you just put it on your third eye and you just lay down and it will help you to really come into the zone, into that, that uh, really deeply relaxed, uh, beta alpha delta place. And this is where the, the, the brain hemispheres are, are balanced. This is where we can drop deep and really experience that, that sense of peace and relaxation and uh, touching into the ocean, as I call it, the, the divine consciousness, ultimate consciousness, something bigger than us. 
And with all our attachment to the body, to the beauty, uh, I think it's really important to have this experience that ultimately we are something so much bigger than this is how we show up in the body we have with, with the beauty or not, with the weight or not, uh, with the health or not. I'm struggling with that one. Uh, so, so the body is very seducive in, in identi identifying with that. So meditation is a way to tap into the deeper field, to get out of that 5 to 10 percent of ego identity, to, to basically expand our consciousness and to tap into a, a deeper truth and, and reality. So that's why I'm personally a big fan of gemstones. I used to be a jeweler. So of course, uh, to dive deeper into not just beautiful gemstones, but more meaningful perspective with them. As an astrologer, it, it was really close to my heart to do a lot of research and, and find those deeper connections. And of course, I love to share about it. So whatever gemstones or crystals you have, you, you can always put on your body. But a very powerful place for placement is the third eye because we're a little more open there. And of course, you can always just relate back the gemstones you have through the colors. So the, the chakras are connecting with the rainbow colors. So uh, that's a good way to kind of have an idea what those colors uh, mean and, and what the stones uh, mean relating to those colors. And if you have bigger crystals, I talked about that in my weekly forecast I do every Saturday. We talked about the crystal quartz and uh, uh, how you can put yourself laying down in a bigger field of crystals. So I showed this kind of the size of crystals. So if, if you have several bigger crystals like that, then you can really get yourself a, a rush, an energy uh, a shower. And depending if the tips go down or up, you will have a very different experience. So uh, you might want to, to have a look at the weekly forecast. Uh, it's still out there on this page there. Uh, so if, if you're interested in that part, and you might want to consider to come next week, it's always at 1 o'clock uh, Hawaiian Standard Time on this website, on this Facebook site. Uh, and if you sign up for my newsletters, there's longer videos, I always send the link out. So if you miss one, you, you, it's easy to be reminded and, and check up on it. So in my weekly forecast, in, in comparison to what we did today, I will more talk about what's actualized for the week. So I'm kind of crystallizing into something to contemplate, something to hold in your consciousness while you go through your week. And then I also do the one minute daily things where I just talk about the, the shifts of the moon and, and what connections the moon makes daily. And that gives you a little update for where you are emotionally throughout the day and what to pay attention to. So uh, clients have told me they love to watch that in the morning with their coffee and kind of get ready for the day. So. I always love to hear back from you. So, so let me know what you love about the videos, what you like me to cover more. Uh, these live talks now with Lisa here, uh, it's a wonderful time to ask questions. And you can ask questions just about anything about astrology because uh, I get to those questions at the end of the video. So I have kind of done what I came in to do. So uh, I don't mind if, if, if you ask more global questions. Okay, Lisa, if you have any questions, now's the time. But even if you ask questions later, I will always come back to the page and, and do that. So if you haven't done so, please like, let me know so there's somebody out there who enjoys the material that's important uh, to keep me going. And uh, I hope I see you on Saturday. And uh, aloha, as we say here in Maui, where I live. And all the best. Namaste. And uh, I see you soon.